UFC Fight Pass presents Extra Rounds. Live from the Fight Pass studios in Southern California, it's X- X- Extra Rounds on UFC Fight Pass, along with Ray, Ray-, Ray Longo and Dean Thomas. Here's your host, TJ DeSantis. Extra Rounds. Ah, oh, it's not a misprint. I didn't play the old intro by accident. No, it is Extra Rounds, and I am joined by the, the old crew. The band is back together. It is Ray Longo, Dean Thomas, and myself, TJ DeSantis. Uh, how's everybody? Good, man. I'm doing great, man. Yeah? This, this is amazing to be back with the crew, you know what I'm saying? I'm happy to be here. I mean, we got a superstar in Dean Thomas. You're all uh, over the place, time, Dean. Any time with Dean is uh, his time very cherished by me. Yeah. And Dean, I tell you, you do it. You do a great job in between rounds. Really creative. You come up with some great stuff, man. It's awesome. Really Thank you, good. Man. I appreciate that. Yeah, yeah, really good stuff. Yeah, totally you're appreciate that. You're crushing it, Dean, and it's it's fun to watch. Like, uh, I mean, how many events are you working a year, man? Like, I feel like it's three out of four weeks a month. Uh, man, I'm working a lot because ESPN picked me up, so I'm working the the pay per views, and then I'm working all the the fight nights. So, I mean, I'm just having a good time, man. Just trying to enjoy this and ride this out. See, well, de- well deserved. You yeah, you live life you. like that Jim Carrey movie, The Yes Man, where you just say yes to everything. I do because yeah. you never know when it's not going to be there no more. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like <laughs> right. you don't know when them opportunities are going to come. So I'm like, all right, I'll do it. I'll do it. I'll do it. One hundred percent. Well, I'm excited that you joined us this week because uh, do, do either of you know what happened 25 years ago today? I do because you told me. I wouldn't have right. known if you didn't tell me. Yeah, like it's subtle. Like I feel like not many people have actually called it out in the MMA world. But uh, 25 years ago today in Japan uh, was the first ever Pride Fighting Championships. And uh, I mean, it doesn't feel like it was that long ago. I mean, I hate to think that 1997 was 25 years ago. Oh, yeah, dude, these these dates are killing me lately, man. I'll tell you. I mean, think about that. 25 years ago, see, it does seem like yesterday. And Oh, my God. 25 yeah, that's not good. years Dean, ago? There's nothing good about this, Dean. Seriously, <laughs> nothing oh my good God. about this. I just thought about that. Put that in context. 25 years ago. Yeah. I mean, oh, my God. Like, think that about songs, like pop culture. Like, yeah. like the Spice Girls are like oldies now? What? I mean, not that I'm listening to the Spice Girls. I'm just yeah, saying. Well. I mean, when it comes on, you do bob your head to it, and it brings up memories. We right. we all know this. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. All 25. Right. Oh, my God. All right. Well, let's, let's stop yeah, feeling a, too old. Yeah, I know, right? You just put a bummer on all of them. Right, right. Yeah. Right, yeah. You're so you're, you're this is so Extra Rounds I'm brought to you by you uh, Geritol. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What's Man. the modern-day Geritol, you think? Oh, that's a great question. I mean, Okay, it, maybe? Tr- tr- truth be told, I don't even know what Geritol is. Yeah, what was it? Wasn't it like a drink? Like, wasn't it like uh, something? Well, it was supposed for... to be some, I guess, vitamins or something. Right, yeah. Like, I, th- I feel like Geritol, like, fought osteoporosis or something like that. Yeah, that didn't work, but I don't know. About that. <laughs> All right, well, let's jump into things. Let's uh, let's go uh, pull up the, the way back machine, if you will, and... Uh, Let's look at uh, the first ever uh, Pride FC, uh, Hicks and Gracie, ladies and gentlemen. Damn. Oh, oh my God. Crap. I forgot about that. Yeah, this is uh, this is a fight. Um, Who's that, Minoru Suzuki? That is Nobuhika Takata. Oh. <laughs> who would later uh, go on to uh, have a role with Pride where he just, like, beat on a drum in his underwear. Right. Wow, that's quite the role. <laughs> I mean, if you can get the game, you got to admire yeah. Hickson always took those tough fights, though, man. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Real tough. Uh, I mean, that that's the old saying Hickson by armbar, right? Yeah. Now look at this guy. Holy crap. That's crazy. Hickson Gracie. So, you know, the rumor that it was alleged that Hickson Gracie was supposed to be at Hoist's spot at UFC 1. Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. I mean, there's conflicting reports about that. So what happened? Uh, why wasn't he there? Uh, I, don't, I don't totally know why, but think about it. If he had been there, would jujitsu caught on as much? Because, like, look at Hickson. He's a specimen. He's not the little small guy like Hoist was. I it's think true. It there was something alluring about that. No, no. I, I, yeah, but I think it would have caught on even more. This guy... 
you know, he was at my school once, Dean, and uh, just uh -huh. watching him roll at the beginning it was just poetry in motion to me. You know what I mean? He was, you could see at that time, wherever I was, I'd have to find out the year. Um, but he was, you could tell there was something different about this cat, man. There's yeah. no question about it. And, uh, you know, you got to read his book. Did you read his book? I, I No, I never read the book. Like I Dana, saw the movie I, Chuck, but. I'm telling you what a great read that is. Yeah. Great. Well, listen to it. I listened to the audio yeah. book. Fantastic. But basically the reason why he says it was because Horian was a control freak and he couldn't control him. He could control uh, Hoyce. Yeah. Uh, because he was like, yeah, you know what I mean? It was something along those lines. So they opted to put in uh, Hoyce over that. I think that was uh, Horian doing all of that. But re re listen to the book, man. It'll, it'll address that for sure. I'm pretty yeah. sure that Hoist was like the family babysitter. I'm not even kidding you. Like, that's that's what he would do. He would teach at the uh, academy, and then he was basically in charge of all the little kids. And then, and then they trusted him to go into the ultimate fighting championship. Right. That's why, that's why it's so funny, you know? <laughs> uh, yeah, you got it. I'm telling you, that book, will, I think it'll blow your mind what was going on. I'm always, I'm so fascinated by the Gracie family. I really am because I like, it's so thing. many. It's so many of them. I'm fascinated by. Well, it's so many of them by about eight different women because Helio was a lunatic. Yeah, and yeah. I think that part of the book is Hickson really reflecting a lot on maybe how his, you know, he realizes now his mother how bad it was for his mother and how she got hurt by a lot of the things. But as a young kid, you're just going with the flow and stuff. Yeah. So I thought it was very. I'm telling you, it was a really. Uh, to me, it was a deep book. I, I admire Hickson for his honesty and the way he spoke and stuff. Crazy. You got. You should get it. Man. I'm telling you. I'm going awesome to. I'm going to peep that because. Yeah, yeah. You're going to like it. Yeah, I'm definitely going to peep that. I, because like I said, I'm so fascinated by the Gracie family and how how it breaks off and there's so many different sections. Um, you're right. going to get into. Trust everything. me, you're going to get into it and it's weird. Yeah. Well, and then there are Gracies that they're not really Gracies if you consider them taking their fathers. You know, paternal last name. They take their mother's maternal. Yeah. Oh, a lot name, of those but... guys. Yeah. Oh, no kidding. The yeah. Ones that just didn't. I, I, ones I that didn't want to be affiliated with the family. They no, were like, nah. no, no, no. They wanted well, no, to be no, affiliated like, with them. Like, 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 like Hodger Gracie. If his yeah. dad is not a Gracie. His mom's a oh. Gracie. Right. <laughs> oh, no kidding. He was like, nah, screw that. I'm well, I mean, you, you, you want to get that branding. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah. Hey, what yeah, do you he guys think been, about the, the he national been, anthem? He could have been Hodja Hagelbaum, but he chose <laughs> Gracie. <laughs> do, you, do you guys like the uh, the national anthem played before the main event here? Because I think there's some pomp and circumstance that comes with it. Well, which national anthem? The Japanese national anthem? Well, both. It was Brazil first, Japanese second. Mm. What's the pomp and circumstance? <laughs> yeah. I, it just it elevates the moment. You know, there's some patriotism there. Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. I, I love it. I mean, you know, they do it in, in, in the Olympics, so. Right. I think it's great. It's interesting because, like, I think about patriotism in mixed martial arts. And Man, look, at that, look at that footwork. <laughs> I was just about to say, look at that stance. <laughs> like... Who knew? Like we, like we had no idea back then. Like this was no, it. No, you know, no, no, This that, was it. And I tell you, that motherfucker had to be tough, fucking dancing around like that. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, I can't believe. Yeah. It. <laughs> I want to go. I want to go back to that. Do I know, right? Do we lose TJ? <laughs> no, I'm here. I'm here. No, I'm here. I'm sitting Wait, back. Wait, TJ, I'm sitting back. TJ, I want to see your face. What are you doing? Can you not see me? Now I see you. Oh, yeah. Sorry, I'm here. Man, look at. Hold on. <laughs> did Did you guys uh watch uh that documentary back in the day called Choke? Yeah, yeah. I've seen that one. That was a great one. I used to try to breathe like him. Remember when he was in the waterfall and he was doing the breathing? I used yeah. to feel like I was doing that, but I couldn't even do that now. I'm so fat. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, no. I, I like I like that breathing. Yeah, I liked all of his was innovative man i think he was way ahead of the time man he addresses even like uh i'll tell you another good thing both of you guys would like did you ever listen to uh bob anderson talk about when he met holes gracie no 
Jesus, man, look that up on YouTube. Fascinating. Well, Bob hey, Anderson he, met Holmes Gracie. Okay. Yeah, he went out. He went to Brazil. This guy was a uh, Olympic, maybe a, a gold medalist or something. He was a high level uh, wrestling guy at the time, mm -hmm. and he went to um, Brazil because they wanted to have a wrestling something. And by coincidence, Holes runs into him at the airport, kind of convinces him he's the guy, and they take him back. They start doing jujitsu and wrestling together. And they formed a great friendship. They both came out back to the U.S. and they entered a tournament that they both won the gold medal. It was like a huge tournament out, out here. He loved Holes Gracie, and right after that, Holes died. No and he kidding. was hanging on. He had the guy's gold medal, and he finally tracked down somebody in New York. I think the kid, the you know, whole junior in, uh, at Henzo's, and I think gave him the uh, gold medal. Wow. That, uh, but the story is another fascinating story uh, of the friendship that the, those guys built up. Can't believe you don't know that. I'm going to try yeah, to find I, I never so heard it. I never heard it. But you see, that's what I'm saying. Like stories like that, they're so fascinating to me. Yeah. No, unbelievable. Trust me, there's, there's another really great story. Great. Oh, you know. just earth my boy. Do it. Look at that, straight to Mount. Dean, are you looking at the fight now or no? Yeah, I'm. I can see it. I can. See I can't you. see it. Uh, you can't, can't see, see it. it. It's a small. Now guy. I can. Now I can. Let me. Uh, like it if was, I. It was uh, a small screen for me. Uh, I can now see it I on can. a smaller screen. Yeah. I don't. I don't know. Can, now I can. Ray, click on the window. Click on the window that you see the. Me, yeah. The fight. Just click on it. Okay. I don't know if that does anything. Oh, that does a duel. Yes, it does. Okay. Thank you. No Thank worries. You. Yeah, so, like, right now, I'm actually doing a, some business with a, with a Rose Gracie for the commission. Yeah, yeah. She's... She's doing the whole, uh, you know, concussion protocol thing. Yeah. So, my uh, that, so. my studio used to be in her jiu-jitsu academy. Really? Yeah. I'm very, very tight with Rose. Yeah. She's don't cool. don't call her hoes. No, I, I, I know. I, I, I asked her about that. <laughs> said, that's so, so how do you pronounce that? <laughs> like, how, like, and I didn't want to say it. So. so, you know, what's funny. Her grandfather was Elio Gracie. Um, yeah. Her maternal grandfather is a bigger celebrity than Elio Gracie. Really? Yeah, he was the, like the Bob Barker in Brazil. No kidding. So, yeah. like, they come from, like, status. Yeah, for sure. So, yeah, they, they all set. Armbar there coming. Goes. There it comes. There it is. Hickson by Armbar, ladies and gentlemen. Man, that dude was terrible. <laughs> Hey, uh, Nobuhiko Takata, he got some wins, man. Who did he oh, he did. Well, Mark, did he Coleman, do? Mark Coleman, allegedly. Allegedly? It's either he happened or it didn't happen. Well, it happened, but the legitimacy of the result was always uh, uh, up in the air by most oh, yeah. hardcore MMA fans. Yeah, okay. That so, explains that. You know. You know how it I is. I got it. I got it. Uh, did either of you ever go to a Pride back in the day? I did. Like in Japan? I, yeah, in Japan I went. Nice. Wow. Yeah, I was with uh, Marcus Aurelio when he fought Mishima. It was on the same card that Josh Thompson. I can't remember the dude who Josh Thompson beat, but he knee barred some guy. In the sli one of the slickest transitions I've ever seen. This is when I realized that Josh Thompson could fight because he was like in an arm bar and he escaped and knee barred the guy all in the same transition. It was wow. It was amazing. But, uh, nice. but the production, the production of a Pride event was like nothing else. Right. I mean, it was, it was so. Well, look how many people are there. Yeah. I mean, it was, I mean, it was like the Super Bowl. Yeah. Taking a look yeah. here at uh, a classic match between Kevin Randleman and Mirko Krokop. What an all-star oh, corner here for Randleman. He's got uh, Wes Sims, Mark Coleman, and uh, Chuck Liddell in his corner. Who's that? Commentating? Heath Herring? Uh, commentating, I, I believe is Heath Herring. Yep. Wow. Heck, how did, uh, Liddell end up in that corner? I know, right? <laughs> he was probably was over there. I think, I think this was, uh, uh, on that same card that maybe he was in the tournament. 
So like maybe oh, maybe this you. is the one that he had fought uh, Overeem uh, on like in the earlier part of the night. I got you. I tell you what, this fight kind of changed the game, really. Yeah, I, agree I mean, with if that. you think of if you think about it, like this is the first time like a wrestler beat a striker with striking. Yeah. And they, like prior to this, you would just you didn't think it could be done. Like you just thought like the wrestlers was just gonna take him down. But then, especially the way he does this, like this was the first time, really. You know, I remember uh, Pride back in the day. Uh, it wasn't live on pay per view here in the states. It would be tape delayed. Uh, sometimes, you know, a couple of days, a week, or just hours. And I remember logging online and seeing the result of this, where uh, Randleman is, you know, celebrating in the corner. And uh, Krokop is unconscious on, on the mat, and I thought it was a Photoshop. Like I just didn't believe it. Yeah, you, oh, wow. like how could you couldn't think it was real because you're like, how did that? Like, what did he like slam him or something? Like, right. You never thought he he hit him, and like that was it. I mean, because I mean, look at this. Like, there, there's no doubt in my mind back in the day where I'm like, okay, yeah, this is exactly what Randomman wants to do. He doesn't want to stand at at space with this man and look at this man they're letting that go way too long Holy i know i was stuff. just i was just thinking about that like look how long they're letting them well i mean they're not i mean they anything. got that endurance round though you know 10 minute opening round <laughs> i mean that right hand of randleman's like he doesn't even move it really just it's so cocked <laughs> But Krokop never knew how to cut cut off the, fence, the cage. No, I mean, that was one thing. I remember Krokop said when he was coming to the UFC. Oh, uh -oh. man. I see. Uh, I remember him coming to the UFC saying, uh, you know, I, I, I look at the octagon and I see soccer nets, like soccer goals. And it's like, well, it didn't really work. Damn. Dude. He got Marcoed. <laughs> I like that. I like that. <laughs> You know, at this time, Krokop's what? Like, top three in the world. Yeah. So, did that first shot that hit him, was that a left hook? I didn't think left, I didn't even know it was hook. a left hook. Yeah, left I hook. I thought it was the overhand right. I thought he faked and came up with the overhand right, but he just straight up left hooked him. I don't yeah, know if he yeah. throws the right hand at all because he finishes with hammer fists on the floor and their, their left hands as well. Well, it's probably why he got hit. He was looking for the right hand the whole right. time because the yeah. guy had it cocked and then he just... By luck, not luck, but whatever. I wonder you know. what the odds would have been for this. Like two oh, billion man. to one? Uh, no one, oh, no one as far as a knockout. Yeah, like not a knockout. Oh, yeah, yeah knockout. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But what, what was uh -huh. it? Like, I think it was uh, well, Prokop's second fight was, in the was, UFC. So only, oh, go ahead. Yeah, only because there's ground and pound, TJ. Probably wasn't right. that big. Yeah, know? that's true. That's true. But but I think yeah. Prokop's second UFC fight, he got knocked out by Gabriel Gonzaga, too. He got head kicked by Gonzaga. Yeah, left left head kick, left high yeah. kick. Yeah. Well, he went out on that one. That's and that was like the first time anybody ever seen somebody's knee just get to contorted. Oh yeah, so bad and so that was clean. bad. It was like, oh I, man. Yeah, he always seemed like a weird guy, Crow Cop. I I've been around him. I could never said a load on. Never. He wasn't a friendly guy. I don't think anybody else. Did you ever meet him? I he was never cold. Met him. He was cold. Yeah, but was, I think that it, that might be like just. Yeah, I think like it might be his culture. Them, yeah, all of yeah, them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, he was definitely not one of the more accessible guys, I don't think. He used to come in and just get the hell out of there. Yeah. Some of them guys, they grow up without, you know, having a lot of friends. So they yeah. <laughs> and we show a Crow Cop uh, loss, we got to show a Crow Cop win. Who, is this uh, Heath Aaron? Yeah. Poor Heath Aaron, right? I mean, how about that haircut? Wow, it's terrible. <laughs> what was was what was supposed to be Heath Herring's uh, forte? He's like a kickboxer. Yeah, he was a kickboxer. Yeah, look, uh, look he trained with. Like, uh, Dean, look at the way he's running in there, Dean, with his know. head first. I I think he trained with Golden Glory. Even no, there's no way. Yeah. But I think, like, you know, especially, like, at this time, like, you probably just showed up at places and was like, okay, I'm a kickboxer now. Right. I think you're right, man. I think you're 100% right. I could do that. 
Yeah, yeah, look, yeah. Look, look at this. This how, guy don't look like a kickboxer. No. How, how about kicking with shoes on? I mean, yeah, how about just having shoes on? Yeah. Like, he probably played football in high school and all that stuff and was an athlete and, like, found yeah. a way over to, like, to, to, like, Holland and, like, went to the gym a few times. He he was from Texas, so you know okay. he was playing football. Yeah. Remember uh, Yoshihiro Kiss Nikau? Yeah. And Heath Herring? Mm-hmm. Gave him a little oh, smooch in the uh, the stare down. Oh, Herring yeah. had Did enough. Him with that, uh, that little bop. <laughs> Yeah, this guy's a football player that showed up at a kickboxing gym one day. Yeah. <laughs> he kind of broke out as a kickboxer when he fought Tom Erickson in Pride mm-hmm. because he was, like, held down for a good portion of the fight, and then he got up and he started screaming at Tom Erickson and then, like, basically knocked him out. Herring was really good at knees on the floor. Jeez, what he's trying. Oh. I love knees on the floor. I forgot about that. Yeah. Or knees to the floor. The knees on the floor. I mean, it's 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 great. I'll tell you that that definitely takes away the turtle position. Boy. I know, I know. Well, you he see, is... and I and I like that actually to take away yeah. the turtle position because then it forces people to have a better guard. Well, a what position is not a defense. Gonna, yeah, that happens to me. I'm just sitting back to guard, and I don't even have a guard. But yeah, that. <laughs> but that's what I'm saying, <laughs> and I think that's part of the one of the that's another reason why the guard is dead because yeah, yeah, you can't need it ahead, and guys can sit in that turtle position. Yeah, oh, without question about it, hundred percent. Look at Herring, just like intent to take these knees off the you know crown of the forehead. And Herring sucks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> It's crazy. You know, I, I think I think Herring was definitely a product of his time. You know what I mean? Yeah, for sure, for sure. No doubt about no, it. I think Dean's got it pretty accurate. It was, a, it was a time when the barrier to entry was nowhere near where it is today. And you had right. a lot yeah. of guys that liked to fight. And, like, again, he probably was a football player. And, you know, that was good enough to beat probably 80% of the freaking other hand knuckleheads that were out there. You know what I mean? So. Yeah. But he's in the big show now against the legitimate guy. That's scary. Yeah, that was no real barrier to get in. I mean, it was nah. just like if you just like watched it on TV and was like, hmm, I can do that, you know. Yeah. And I can probably I don't remember what the timeline is, but there was probably no YouTube, right? Where you could check a guy out. At this time, yeah. no. If yeah, there so, was YouTube, it was very early, and we're talking about, like, you know, cat videos yeah, so, being the only thing on it. Right. So anything goes. Look at that liver shot just killed him. Mm, yeah. Crap. It was bad. Oh, boy. Watch Oof. this liver shot. Could... You know what's funny, Dean? He did try to cut kick him. <laughs> he just he just didn't move off the center line. Yeah. He, he he does that right. He probably doesn't even get hit that hard with that kick. Yeah. Holy crap! We're talking about uh, knees on yeah, the floor. See, he did try. Yeah, he did you see try. that? You see that? He tried. <laughs> yeah, he tried. Talking about knees on the floor. Let's uh, let's look at one example of probably the worst knees uh, on well, the with floor. That Volchenkin or whatever his name was. Oh, oh no, that guy was no. a savage, man. E- Remember Igor, Mark, Mark, yeah. Mark Kerr just kneeing him in the head? Yeah. Yeah. Um, where is it here? Uh, here it is. Mark Coleman against Alon Goez. Oh, man. Poor Alon <laughs> Goez. And this is one of those situations where, like, people bring up this uh, – Example of why knees are, are bad on the floor, but like, dude, these guys aren't even in the same weight class. A long go is, is, is probably 205 pounds here or less. And Mark, Coleman, oh, that was uh, I t- oh, yeah. so a long go that's Alan Goez, is that yeah, it? Yeah, it's Alan Alan. Goes, yeah, I'll tell you, he, was, he wasn't bad, man. He was, no, he was pretty good. good, he was good, right? He, no, he 20... was a decent little fighter back then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I actually got a picture with him from years ago that nobody even would know who the hell it was. But uh, he, I thought he was good. He was a pioneer yeah. for sure. 
But it's crazy to to look back at this today after we'll, yeah. after seeing how much it's developed and evolved and how much better everybody is. To well, go I back got, and look at this. It's yeah, just like, yeah. oh, man. Well, I think I'm feeling better about today after yeah. watching. You know, yeah. I, I wasn't sure, but this is pretty good. Yeah. Dan Henderson, Vandalay Silva. Uh, this is a rematch. I remember their first fight was unbelievable. Damn. Jeez, and he was 36 back then. What year is this? <laughs> it, I think this is 2007. So this is... Uh... Wow, so Henderson's in his 50s. Holy crap. This is 15 years ago. Wow. I bet that guy still got huge power in that fucking right hand. Oh, oh yeah. I don't think that's going anywhere. No, you faint that little left uh, lead leg kick, yeah. and then you come over the top with the H-bomb. It's uh, crazy because like he did he did so much with so little. Well, what's funny uh, is towards the end of his career, I was talking to Frankie, our producer, about this yesterday. Like Henderson can't even really walk towards the end of his career, but he gets in the octagon and you know, all right, he's mobile and he's gonna knock your block off. Hey, they say power's the last thing to leave, and he's a freaking living example of it. I yeah. Know. I mean, how Think many times guy. how many times do they count Dan Henderson out? You know what I mean? Yeah. Of fights. And think. Think of the big names this guy be. I know. He's not even that. He's not even like that big of a guy. Like when you're standing around, you're like, he's very unassuming and just kind of small. Well, I think Henderson would fight at 205 and he'd weigh in at like 202. Yeah. Jesus. Yeah. He definitely was a 185er at best. Mm -hmm. Is there a better nickname than the axe murderer? Uh, that was that was good. You saw his son just fought recently. His his first amateur fight and won. Did he? Yeah. Nice. I read about that. Vandalay's got a son that fights. So I've heard cool. stories about Vandalay, um, where he was like truly one of those guys you never wanted to talk to if you're around him. And then he beat Sakuraba and then just became the nicest person ever. Uh, he was a nice guy when I met him. I'll yeah. be right back, guys. Hold on a second. All right. Oh. You ever you ever meet anybody like that, Dean, in their fighting career where they were just kind of like a standoffish person and then one day they're just everybody's friend? Sometimes and because like they don't know how to act, you know, right? Because they get, you know, you're supposed to be like a tough guy and you're trying to, you know, in your own head create this, you know, drama in your head so that you can go out there and fight people. Right. The reality is you're not you probably not really like that, but you have to get that way in order to get in the mentality to fight people. Right. I mean like like Nick and Nate Diaz. They gotta like find a reason to hate. A hundred percent like that. They're a hundred percent like that. Like I met both of them, and they're like nice guys, super man. nice, like cool dudes. Yeah, but if if you're fighting them, they're gonna go after your grandma if they see her yeah. on the street. Yeah, like they have to just put themselves in that headspace. But uh, and there are some fighters like that, man, where they're just like they don't know how to act. Right. So, but then when they start winning it or they retire, then they're like, you know, you know what, guys, you know, I was just playing. Right. I I ain't really like this. <laughs> I and and I make fun of uh, Danny Castillo all the time for that. Because Danny Castillo, he's still kind of getting that headspace as a coach. Yeah. And, like, you'll see him at the events, man, and, and he's hyping his guys up. And he'll be like, yo, man, you're going to kick blah, 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 this, that. You're going to F this guy up. And, and I'm always seeing him like, like, Danny Castillo, you are a mean dude. And <laughs> I, and the last time, and I said it on TV, and he heard about it, and he comes up to me and goes, I'm a nice guy, man. <laughs> see, I smile. And he's smiling. He's like, I smile sometimes. And I'm like... <laughs> I, s- I smile sometimes. Yeah, <laughs> I like that. Now he's a he's a fun guy though. He's a he's a cool dude. So Dan Henderson acquired Clinch Gear, the uh, company that made his shorts, by essentially taking a percentage of the company every single time he uh, was sponsored by them. Mm-hmm. And then one day, he just owned more than any anybody else. No kidding. Yeah. It was like 1%, 1%, 1%. Something next thing like that. He's, a, he's the majority yeah. owner. <laughs> yep. Wait, I, I jumped out on that conversation. Who were the guys that you said, you know, became nicer after a certain point? Uh, oh, no, I, n- Nobody in particular did, did Dean uh, mention. I'll tell you, you know who I think for me? Hmm. Uh, 
and it's a little off, but I absolutely love the guy is Rashad Evans. I think has become so much more personable, man. It's amazing to yeah. He's a laid back like, guy now in in retirement. Oh, oh. my god. No, but no question. I don't like I don't I don't have a lot of history with him as he was fighting. Like when he was like in the the top of his career, I didn't have a lot of history with him. He, he, um, to I me, don't know him like that. To me, he was a guy that wasn't necessarily uh, a jerk or mean in any w- way, shape, or form. But he was a guy that definitely was like a fighter, and he he wasn't super uh, laid back unless you were kind of in his inner circle. Mm-hmm. Right. I think you know, I look, I've been around the guy, you know, it was maybe a hello or whatever, but now he's just so I mean, I always have a blast when I see him. He's funny, he's engaging. Uh I don't know if it's the fucking mushrooms or I was whatever. Say, he's, he's, su- doing. he's super spiritual and yeah, he's no, he's just some he, Zen type stuff. Yeah, yeah, great. he's great. He gives a totally different persona, you know, than when he was walking around as champ. I'm not saying standoffish because I'm never looking for anything, but not like he is today. I think he's a guy I think He's completely done a 180. Yeah, yeah. You know? You know, the UFC has a way of breaking you down, D. And, you know what I mean? Like, they was, will humble went, you quickly. Now, let me tell you something. When I, was, when I inducted Matt into the Hall of Fame, I remember <laughs> seeing it. So they, they had one of those weekends where they had three fights. Yeah, you know, I like remember. I, I, had, yeah. I had tickets to the first two nights of fights. The third, you know, the pay-per-view show, definitely not. And I run into... Rashad in the freaking lobby of the hotel, he said they didn't give him tickets. And this was whenever whenever that was when I inducted him, not, not that long ago, right? Yeah, but, yeah. You know, so I think, uh, you know, like, again, they have a way of putting you in a picking order that makes you <laughs> changes that, you a little bit. <laughs> I mean, they keep, they, they humble you quick. I mean, they let you know that there's levels to this. Yeah. You know I mean, what I'm saying? Know. Like, when you think you're at a certain level, and then oh, yeah. It, yeah, you then they put you in your place oh, no, real just, quick. <laughs> just when that poor Josh Emmett thought he was doing something, they gave him the nosebleed seats. Yeah, <laughs> oh yeah, we got the seats, so we got you a couple of seats. <laughs> and, then, and and you look and you look down, Tom Brady's down in the front row, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You're like, wait a minute. Yeah, yeah, they let you know worse. real quick, man. They let yeah, you know. Yeah, right. He 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 got the message really quick. I get it. I'll get back in line. Sorry. Yep. Hey, I can hate I to please, say it, but can like, I please have kids. Can I please have Kim Kardashian seat next time? <laughs> I, I, uh, I hate to say it, guys, but like I'd rather be first row, second deck at a UFC event where I can look down at the octagon, but also have like a clear sight line to a screen because you're watching the monitor no matter where you are. You yeah, know, you know what it is for me when I go and I sit like ringside and I go with like the guy. It's just so many people you're catching up with, and I'm always was always with wide men around. Right. Like, we're having a blast, man. There's other guys, Volante. Yeah. You know, I just, I think last time I was at the garden for that BMF thing, he, I was sitting next to Ian Heim, Heimlich. I never even knew the guy. What a fucking sweetheart he was. So you get to, I, I love mixing it up. and Yeah, it's a social people. thing for, for yeah, you. Yeah, it's a social or, thing yeah. for me. And I don't want to, you know, I could watch it at home. But when I, when I get those good seats, it's just a social thing. And, oh, for sure. It's like, it's like being in high school and seeing all wow, your friends. Yeah, without a it's doubt. It's great. Yeah. It's amazing. That's why I love my job. I say, and you guys come down and you're with your yeah, friends. Yeah, no, like, Yo, I'm, 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 I'm with you 100, percent man. I love that. You know what I mean? That's you know, even if I stop tomorrow, I hope I could continue just hanging out and bullshit. And I love watching the fights. But that to me is like you said, it's more of a social thing. But it's it's I've I've always had fun with it, man. Well, that's yeah. one thing I will say. No matter how big the UFC and mixed martial arts gets as a whole, like the core people that, you know, work in the business has remained pretty small, you know, like yeah. it's, it's, it's something where everybody knows everybody. It's yeah, like yeah, you, yeah. John Morgan, yeah. Mark Ramondo. Right. Uh, I love Ramondi's a good guy. <laughs> no. Oh yeah. He's a good dude, man. Yeah. he's a and, good dude. and Morgan too. I just saw him at the CFFC. They wrote, they're just, yeah, that's right. Look, it's a, it always, you know, like it always was. Look, back in the day, Dean, we were there years ago, right? Yeah. And we've seen a change. And, you know, everybody was on a very personal level. You know what I mean? Right. And then uh, it kind of got a little corporate, I think, but still not bad. Still hung together. But, you know, even, you know, like Bert leaving. I still love seeing I still see him. But, I mean, I used yeah. to love seeing him there. And it was just like a... That was like a happy place, man. I don't know. You know, yeah. you're doing your thing at home and then you get a, a weekend to go and bullshit with people that you like and haven't seen in a while. And I don't know. To me, 
Uh, that's my comfort zone anyway. Right. Well, I mean, Ray Longo hitting the town with Bruce Buffer. Uh, but you know what? But, but you're right about that. And and I think the, the way to stay in this game for a long time is you do have to recognize when the UFC is going to put you in your place, did you have to recognize <laughs> where your place is? Because I think that's when people get pissed off at the UFC is it yeah. when they're like, hey, listen, you like you said, Kim Kardashian and Holly Berry are sitting in those seats and you got yeah. the nosebleeds or you can't get tickets. Then guys get pissed off. They're like, man, I done did so much for this company. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. yeah. But you know, when you look is, at it, look, I, I could be critical, but, you know, at the end of the day, the guy is running a business. Yeah. And, you know, I promote fights too, Dean. So I know exactly where the guy's coming from on a smaller scale. Mm -hmm. Those tickets are a problem because everybody expects something. Yeah. And you have to know when to say no. And it's it's not easy, but uh, no denying this guy did a fucking great job with this thing, man. Listen, you know, when everybody's always talking about fighter pay and everything else, you know who never jumps into the conversation? Other promoters. Other promoters. That's are like, true. Oh, yeah, leave me out of this. <laughs> I, love I love it. Yeah, I love it. Leave me out of this. The UFC yeah. is doing just fine. Leave me out yeah. of this. It's it's the media. It, it's either 10 and 10 or $200. That's the thing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. And it's true, you know, at the highest level outside the UFC, you're taking fights against other contenders where you could be making a potential twenty thousand uh, dollars for the same fight in your UFC debut. I know. Without a doubt, you know, uh, poor Quinn got beat up by Ninja Hua's brother. Wow, man, no one remembers Ninja. Everyone, I know, Shogun. no one does remember Ninja. No, yeah. yeah. Whatever happened to him? I don't know. Either, like, that's the great mystery for me. Uh, Ninja Hua is one, and uh, Ricardo Arona is the other. I mean, listen, hence the name Ninja. You don't even know. If right, you know. exactly. <laughs> he might be here right now. <laughs> he might be standing right behind you. You're not going to know, yeah, DJ. It's, it's fitting, right? <laughs> yeah, right. Ninja. <laughs> I mean, what do you want? That guy, he's always there. I see him in the background lurking around. <laughs> that's funny. Uh... Uh, let's go with uh, another one here. I got uh, I got something good here. I got a little list. Uh, top five pride moments. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, oh, this should man. be number one, huh? That's hey. my number one for sure. Yeah. I think it is number one, but they, no, they start with it. So we though. got number five right here, which is uh, Diaz and Gomi. That was awesome. Yeah. That was, yeah, that was amazing. The record books do not reflect this one. Well, you know what? We all we all know it existed. Oh yeah, no, yeah right. Well, they they, they, they got to go back and include it now, right? It's everything's upside uh, down. With that. I no, don't know. I, probably not. I mean, it. They should, in my opinion, they should. Man, Gomi was such a stud back then. Too. Oh yeah. yeah. I mean, there was a time where Gomi had a legitimate claim to be number one in the world at fifty-five. Yeah, no doubt. And I remember when BJ beat him, it was a big deal. Yeah. It was like, holy crap, man. BJ just screwed yeah. this dude. And BJ went out of his way to go fight him. Like, it was on uh, Rumble on the Rock, which his brother ran. I tell you, those were good shows, too. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it was. The Rumble on the Rocks? Yep. Yeah, those were good. We just saw But again, it goes to show. They, those were great shows, but it goes to show you that promoting isn't easy right well you know? that, that's one thing too we're talking about rumble on the rock like that's one place the ufc hasn't been yet they haven't been to hawaii that i'm so i'm in shock over that i think it's really hard to do a show over there you know obviously you got to fly in everybody that's a little bit more expensive and then on top of that uh there's not a great arena to do it in you know the blaisdale where a lot of those shows took place i think it only seats like five thousand people Really? Yeah, but, but yes. TJ, uh, that that's five thousand more than the Apex. That you know that, that is there's true. there that is true. But the Apex, you know, everything's there. They don't have to bring anything, you know. Yeah, but just to get you know, just to spread the show out, I think Hawaii would be fantastic. I agree. You know, but especially you know what they you know they could have did that when Holloway was really big yeah. here. Yeah. Or BJ Penn, you know, Bellator has been there. Yeah. I don't know. I just, for some reason, I heard that the economy, that they th maybe they thought the, co the economy couldn't really sustain it. Well, I do know that it is insane uh, to try to buy a house in Hawaii. 
Is like a lot, really? a lot of yeah. locals. Like the average house in Hawaii is like a million dollars. Yeah. Yeah, I'd say, I, unfortunately, that's where we're fucking heading, man. Holy shit. I mean, I live in Southern California. I, I feel your pain. Oh, yeah. No, nah, it's Long Island. Eh? There's not, not much different. No kidding. Oh, damn, it's not good. Yeah. And the taxes are bizarre. Oh, yeah, I could imagine that. Almost, this, almost as bizarre as Dos Quiros wearing a mask. Dos Jr.? Yeah. <laughs> this is crazy. Hey. And the ref, get this mask off. Did he take the mask off? Yeah, he's trying to. I don't really know why he needed to take the mask off. It's like you got knocked out, kind of. His eyes were still open. Oh, man. Hmm. Now we got to cover his face because, you know. Because you can't let nobody see him. Right. You can't right. reveal his identity. <laughs> Here you go, number one. <laughs> Do you remember Takiyama's nickname? Sexy Yama? That one? No, no, that was uh yeah, that guy was in the UFC. Oh. Yeah. Takiyama was known as the hot one. Wow. H A W T. Hot. This this guy? Yeah. And it was a joke because he gets so yeah. lumped up after this fight with Fry. Don Fry was my first favorite fighter. Yep. I wouldn't have never admitted that. I love Don Fry. You see, he was like calling out John Jones recently. <laughs> I mean, like you do. That's actually funny. <laughs> what a fight. <laughs> Did he just pull Don Fry into Mount? Yeah, he pulled him out. <laughs> Look at this. Looks like it could be a gift wrap coming up. <laughs> <laughs> did, did either of you ever uh, get a chance to put on pride gloves or see pride gloves? Up close and personal? Be, I don't, I don't, don't believe so. Everyone brings up the fact that they were well, like curled. There was like a curl to them, so they didn't uh, poke. Poke your eyes out. I I don't even remember. I don't know, but if that was true, I, I I'm sure the UFC'd be using them. And they also had uh, laces, so you would, and this you guy would... this guy looks like he got poked in the eye about three times. Yeah. The hot one. The hot one looks like he's been eye poked. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see here. Anything else we need to hit? Nah, I think we're good. So let's uh, let's go over here. Uh, being that the band is back together, I thought we would uh, hit a couple things before we get out of here uh, regarding UFC 280. Uh, it's a couple weeks out uh, in uh, Abu Dhabi. Dean, are you going? No, I'm not going. I'm not going. I'm uh, enjoying it from home. Ray Longo's uh, going. Damn, Dean. Who's taking yeah. your spot over there? Um, so I, I, I don't think that any – so I think they're doing the desk from Bristol. Oh, okay. Yeah, so because ESPN is doing it, they're doing a desk from Bristol. So I think Anthony and Alan are working that show. Oh, wow, cool. Yeah. Got it. Um, it is uh, headlined by Charles de Bronx, uh, who is – it's weird because, like, I, I keep wanting to say defending his title, but he's not. Um, he technically is. Yeah, he's trying to get it back yeah. against uh, Islam Makashev. Uh, this is a fight that I don't think really anybody thought, you know, would be happening. Like, it's still sort of a Cinderella story for Oliveira, who's been in the UFC for as long as he has, and to come into his own this late in his career uh, against uh, Makashev, who, like, I feel bad. I feel like the narrative for Makashev uh, is a lot of people thinking that, you know, if he loses, maybe that entices Khabib to come out and fight uh, Oliveira. I got to tell you, look at this Chris Wade, man. Definitely, well, I tell you, Wade really was, the, he out-wrestled them at times, man. It's crazy. So, Chris Wade, he's a, he's a New York kid, right? He's yeah, yeah, Long he's Island. a Long Island yeah. kid. Really yeah. good wrestler. I mean, just think of that. It's a years ago, and he's still doing good today. Yeah. But he, he fought, they gave him some of those Dagestan wrestlers. I think he had a couple of them on his career. So, he, he beat, he's tough, man. He did great. 
What do you guys think about uh, this style matchup for uh, Charles Oliveira uh, and, and Islam Makashev? Is, uh, you know, I look at Oliveira, you know, he's a problem on the feet. He's a problem on the floor. What does Makashev got to do, Ray, to sort of get his hand raised and become a champ? Man, I, I'm going to say he's just got to be the absolute bully. He's really got to use his physicality and just uh, – Try to crush him, take away those submissions and just smother him and get his striking going. Just similar to, I think, what Felder kind of did to him. He broke him. You know, he'll probably have a couple of submission attempts. And I, I'm flip-flopping on this, but Me too. I just, <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm flip-flopping. I, I, I really have no idea which way I'm going. One way I see it, like exactly what I'm saying. And the other way I see it as, uh, you know, uh, uh, Oliveira gives him a fit standing up. They go down, but you know it's five rounds. He uses his jujitsu to negate some of that stuff and get back to his feet. And I don't know. It could oh, be. Oh wow! I'm looking at the yeah. odds right now. Do you know who? Uh, you know who the favorite is in this fight? I'm saying it makes it. Is, yeah. Yeah, almost two to one. Oh, yeah. Wow. Minus one ninety. I wouldn't give him that much. 